Hi, everyone, and welcome to Boston Balling. I'm your host, Gabby Hurlbut. Football season is finally almost here. It's officially preseason time, and it's super exciting. And I think everyone's really excited for the season to start. I know I am. I've, I've missed it. And it's going to be fun this year. I think it's going to be a good season. There's a lot of good teams to look out for this year. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. And so that brings me to introducing my guest that I have for me this week. Um, he does great, excellent Patriots coverage for SB Nation and is always, you know, posting on Twitter about the Patriots and keeping everybody updated and does a really good job. So, Ryan, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you for the kind words and appreciate you having me. Yeah, you're welcome. I appreciate you joining me on the show today. It's, uh, it should be good, could be a good conversation. Yeah, for sure. It's football's right around and starts tonight. So it's pretty crazy. It's been yeah. a long summer, but uh, happy to have the season back and, and kind of get into the swing of things. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it, too. Um, so kind of before we start talking about the Patriots a little, can you just give people a brief overview on kind of your journey into sports and how you started working in the industry? Yeah, for sure. So I actually work I kind of do this part-time. I work a full-time um, sales job, kind of uh, your typical nine to five that people like to say. Yeah. Uh, but I always had a passion for sports media. I kind of started a, a Twitter account my, my sophomore year of high school, like right around the time Twitter kind of came around. It was like 2011-ish, 2012. Uh, it's like nine years ago now. But had a, like a, just a sports blog with a few of my friends um, just to kind of kill some time, um, do some like in computer class, honestly, just to – Look like we were doing something. Um, and it kind of took off from there. Just kind of continued to grow my Twitter account. Um, you know, interned at WEI and the sports hub throughout college when I kind of wasn't sure which direction I wanted to go, but um, kind of learned that, you know, it's all about kind of networking yourself. And that's obviously social media can be a little difficult sometimes and has its pros and cons. But I think one of the pros is you're able to, you know, network yourself and not necessarily have to you know, have these certain gigs to get into the industry and everything. It's kind of what you can do with your own work. Um, so my junior year of college, four year, three years ago now, um, reached out to Burned at Pat's Pulp and I've been covering the team for them. I uh, got credentials this year, so it should be a good um, experience for me. Kind of been a sponge so far, just kind of learning um, how to go about things and, and um, you know, I guess th that side of things rather than being a fan and going to the games that, in the seats. Uh, it's been a cool experience so far, but that's kind of where I'm at. That's kind of been my journey, the, the, the overview of it, but um, looking to continue to grow and, um, you know, see what happens. Yeah, that's awesome. It seems like such a cool experience and it's definitely a different type of experience going when you're kind of working and you're covering the team as opposed to just going as a fan just to watch oh, yeah. the game. It's just a lot different of an experience. Yeah. Oh my, yeah, for sure. I mean, no cheering in the press box, right? Uh, you kind of have to watch what you say on Twitter and everything. Not that, you know, is ever anything bad or, or anything, but obviously you're under a little bit more of a microscope, but um, I'm happy for it. I'm super thankful. It's kind of been a hard work pays off type of moment for me. So i um, excited to kind of dive into that this year, kind of get that experience and see what happens with it. Yeah. And it's hard work really does pay off. And, and especially with this season, you know, it's, it's going to be a fun season this year with hopefully things being kind of more back to normal after the pandemic. And so I think it's going to be a really fun experience for you. Yeah, it'll be cool. Like I said, uh, I got to go to training camp. Obviously there's some, a uh, little bit of tweaks. It's not completely back to normal. Obviously there's kind of some certain people that can go around the players and ask questions where some of us can't um, just because of, um, you know, COVID and they're kind of still watching things. And obviously I think that'll kind of be more towards the normal. I don't think it'll be a full on experience like we saw pre pandemic, but uh, I guess beggars can't be choosers. And like I said, super thankful to kind of have that perspective on the team and, and get to learn a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, this season, I think, is going to be kind of interesting with the Patriots. I think it'll be a better season, less frustrating season than we saw last year. I think there's a lot to look forward to and a lot of optimism. But what do you think in general about kind of the offseason moves that they made this year and, and kind of how you think the season's going to go? Yeah, they certainly improved, right? Um, 
I mean, yeah. starting with the quarterbacks, obviously invest in a first round pick in Mac Jones the first time they've done that, the quarterback position, because they, they haven't had to for 20 years. But they're not uh, used since to that. Yeah, since Drew Bledsoe, right? So yeah. um, obviously a lot of optimism and hope surrounding Jones. Uh, you'll hope and expect a, a better Cam Newton product if he was if he is the one that that starts week one or starts for X amount of games. Um, you know, considering the talent around him got a lot better. You know, obviously the two tight ends, we've seen the Patriots kind of change how they run their offense back in the early, you know, 2010s, 11s with Gronk and Hernandez. Uh, that'll kind of come back. They, they obviously had that with Gronk and Martellus Bennett. Uh, so I think they have two guys that can, you know, do a lot with Hunter Henry, kind of a seam runner. John U. Smith can kind of uh, play as an extra wide receiver, very athletic as a tight end. So they'll be able to do some cool things with him. Uh, obviously, Nelson Aguilar and, and Kendrick Bourne will help that receiving core. Uh, it's been super depleted and, and really lacked big playability really for the last few years now. And then flipping it over to defense, obviously, Christian Barmore, the second round pick. A lot of people saw him as a top 20 player. We're able to move up and get him in the second round. Extremely good value there. Matthew Judon, uh, Kyle Duggar and Josh Uche, you know, hopefully taking year two leaps. So, I think this team is a lot better, obviously, for the amount of money they spent. And I think they had a really good draft the last two years, especially early on. And I just think um, they have a lot more depth than they did last year. I think that's what really hurt them down the stretch when you kind of get those nicks and bruises. Uh, as the year goes on, they didn't have the uh, the proper personnel to kind of substitute in and, and still put a competitive football team on the field. Yeah, I agree with a lot of those points. I think it was good to see how aggressive they were. I mean, I mean, it was it was really crazy just, you know, as soon as free agency started and Bill was just on top of it and super aggressive this offseason. And that was something we needed because they had so much cap space, which I think was a good thing. And like you said, depth was definitely an issue in the receiving core, I would say, was one of the biggest holes that we saw after last season. And that was something that did need to be addressed. And I think he did a good job of bringing in some talent to surround Cam. And I think, you know, last season there was definitely a frustrating one, I'd say, for Patriots fans, just in terms of the way that the team performed. And we kind of expected that because last season was very much going to be a transition year as it was anyway. I mean, the first season without Brady – who you've had as your quarterback for over 20 years. And it's so the unknowns that come with that, you know, and bringing a new quarterback into the system, you don't know how Cam was going to perform last season. And, and he quite frankly, didn't really have a lot of weapons around him in general. So I think it was just a frustrating season, but they, they did what they could and they ended up finishing the season with a d decent record, despite a kind of everything that they faced. So that was definitely promising. And I think, with everything that they have now, all the players they have to surround a quarterback, they can't really get worse than they were last year. I think that they're going to be a better team and a more competitive team. And I think they have a chance at getting one of those wild card spots in the playoffs this year. Cause I do still think that Buffalo wins the division. Yeah. I mean, obviously what you said there uh, kind of starting out, I think when you look back on it, considering the circumstances, COVID, a lot of turnover, a lot of opt-outs at key spots, Patrick Chung, Dante Hightower, um, you know, bringing in Cam Newton, considering COVID and his first year in a new system, first year at a new team, and for his first 10 years in the league, uh, it's kind of a uh, miracle that they did win seven games last year. I think, yeah. obviously, it's hard to look at it that way when, when it, you know, fresh off the season, it's difficult to kind of see the positives. But looking back, when you see this product that they have on the field for this year, uh, I think it was a really good coaching job and just the ability to win seven games, right? They beat some pretty good teams too. Vegas, Miami, Baltimore, Seattle. So a lot of a lot of good teams that they ended up beating, obviously down the stretch is when they struggled, right? They didn't have the proper depth uh, to kind of be able to handle those, the, you know, the, the stretch run at the end of the year. But uh, like I said, super excited for the season. I think they'll improve mightily. And like you said, I, I do think the Bills are the favorites, but um, as we've seen over the years, it's so hard to sustain success in this league for, you know, two, three, four, five years. That's what makes the Patriots dynasty so impressive. Uh, they'll still have to prove it to me. I think uh, when you have a coach like Bill Belichick, somebody who knows how to uh, game plan and knows how to win inside that division, um, it, the Patriots certainly have the talent on the roster and on paper to compete for the division, but 
I think 10, 11 wins is right around where they'll sit and, and certainly be in the mix for a wild card spot. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like when I'm, when talking about their record for this season with people or how I see them finishing the season, I said somewhere around, you know, 10 and seven or 11 and six type of thing is what I'm kind of looking at somewhere in that range, which is a vast improvement from last year. For sure. I, I have them right around there. Vegas is win totals nine and a half. Um, if you're a betting man, betting woman, I bet over the over any time. I think that's a safe bet. Obviously playing a third place schedule this year. So a little bit easier than, than what they're used to in the past. Um, I do think, you know, they're a better team than the Jets. Obviously, I still think Miami, who is a team on the rise, spent a lot of money too and improved through the draft the last few years. I still think they're a year or two away, considering you don't really know what you're going to get out of Tua. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think the Patriots are right there, second in the division. And, and I think if they stay healthy and over-improve a little bit, can certainly push the Bills for the division. Yeah, and I think Miami could be tough, but you're right. It's it, A lot of that is going to depend on Tua and if he actually performs this season because what we saw from him last year was not exactly super promising. And so I think that's what's mainly concerning to Dolphins fans right now is how what are they exactly going to get from him? And I think if he can be really reliable, then a couple of years from now they'll be really, really good. For sure. Yeah, I think and it'll be cool too. Obviously, Mac Jones in the division, those two guys were teammates for a long time. Mac battled for his job and, and, and learned a lot from Tua. He talked about it a lot, him and Jalen Hurts. So a little rivalry there would be really cool. Uh, but like you said, uh, this is a big year for Tua. Obviously passed on Justin Herbert uh, last year for Tua and then obviously traded that third pick to San Francisco, which was, you know, Trey Lance or, or Justin Fields or Mac Jones, which they could have took. So I'm sure he has to prove something. This is kind of a make, I don't, th- I want to say a make or break it year, but um, they'll be, you know, thinking twice about that pick if he, you know, turns around and doesn't have the success or the consistency that they'd like. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, this leads well into the next thing I want to talk about, which is the starting quarterback situation, even because I think there's a lot of people wondering and speculating who's actually going to start. And I've always been on the side of, I don't see Belichick starting a rookie quarterback right away when he has other options. I think he's more likely the type of coach that I could see sitting Mac Jones, at least at first until he really, really learns the system. And Belichick is super confident that he's ready to go. And I mean, he brought Cam back for a year for a reason. I think he's meant to be that bridge guy. And I I've been fully confident that regardless of what happened in training camp, that I think Cam ultimately is the starter. And then Mac Jones, whether whether Cam performs remains to be seen, but I do think Cam's on a short leash. And I think if he doesn't perform, then maybe we do see Mac start partway through the season. But I just want to get your thoughts on that and which side of that you're kind of on. Yeah, I kind of agree with you to to an extent. Uh, I do think you're right in terms of Belichick kind of being hesitant to starting that rookie quarterback. Uh, just being down there, no real quarterback has really taken the bull by the horns in a sense and, and ran with the job, uh, which I think speaks volumes about Cam Newton's inability to kind of run away with things. He's obviously been the favorite to start since they even drafted Mac Jones. Um, Mac has had more better days. He's been able to string – you know, consistency together. Cam has been much better than last year, looks much healthier. That's no disrespect to him. Uh, But you'd expect a 12-year veteran to be able to kind of step in and run away with the job. And I think that speaks volumes to Mac, his ability to take a lot on. You know how complex this offense is. To be able to be a sponge and really adapt on the fly and and truly develop. Uh, I think, too, if he was going to start week one, Cam Newton would really have to lose the job rather than Mac Jones win it. Uh, Mac Jones would have to continue to do what he's doing and really win this job by a landslide for him to be in in consideration. And Cam would really have to put like the product he put on the field last year, not being able to pick up things, not hitting, you know, receivers on the money, struggling with timing and anticipation, which they like in that offense. Uh, So still a lot of time left. I think right now, Cam Newton's certainly the favorite to start, but I think he'll be on a much shorter leash than last year. Uh, The other thing too, Mac Jones is a five-year investment. We've seen a lot over the years people rush that first-round quarterback when they're not truly ready, and it just hinders them for years to come. You almost waste a pick, and they're labeled as busts. But I like to say I don't truly think quarterbacks are busts. I just think they're not put in a good situation or they're rushed along. So I think the Patriots, 
finally have that quarterback of the future, somebody that they can rely on going forward and put a competitive football team, they're not going to rush things. Uh, but I do think he looks super pro ready. He looks much you know, further along than any other quarterback, rookie quarterback that's been in their system. Uh, he needs you a lot closer to playing meaningful football than we think. That is really good to know, though, because, you know, you always wonder. You never know how those rookie quarterbacks are going to pan out. It just it is what it is. I mean, you draft them and then you hope that you hope that they are somebody that can be the future of your team. You just don't know how they're going to pan out until they're actually there. And I think that that's exciting that Mac seems further along than other rookie quarterbacks that you would think. But I'm, I'm still, like I said before, I still think that something drastic would have to happen and Mac would have to really noticeably be significantly better than Cam by the time the season starts for him to even think about starting him originally. But there's no excuses really for Cam this year. You know, now he has more weapons around him. And there was a lot you could say last year to kind of cut him some slack, like him getting COVID, him not having a full off season and him not having a lot of talent around him you can consider all those factors, but also some of the stuff was on cam himself. So there's, I don't, there's really no excuses for him this year. He can't perform this year. Then I think that's it for him. I think, I think we see, and if they're succeeding in the beginning of the season with him, then he remains the starter. But if not, I do think that he's definitely on a short leash. And I think Bill's going to keep an eye on the Mac Jones situation and I wouldn't be surprised if partway through the season we see Max starting games if Cam's just not not handling it and isn't able to get the job done. I agree. Agree with everything you said. I think it'll be a much shorter leash for him. Um you know I I think like I said if Cam is struggling early on it's not versus the best you know competition. Like I said they have Miami, the Jets, Houston mixed in there, obviously the Bucks game week four. So some favorable matchups for, for the quarterback and the offense. Uh, if he's not able to kind of, you know, run away with the job and have success, I think that leash will be a little bit shorter. And when if Mac is ready midseason, um, they'll, they'll likely put him in. But it's certainly a fascinating situation, something to monitor, I guess, on a week-to-week basis. Uh, but like I said, I think all in all, I think Cam Newton is your week one starter. Uh, and they'll kind of yeah. go from there, kind of take it a week-to-week basis. Yeah, I think so too. I mean – which when, when I saw it, I mean, they're not paying him a lot for this season. Like, I mean, it's very dependent on if they, if they succeed this year. And I think that shows me that Bill's being really cautious of, on, about the cam situation for good reason. I mean, you, you need to monitor that situation and you have another quarterback here that you just drafted that very much could be ready to go partway through this season. So I think Cam's aware of that, but whether he's actually able to turn that into results is going to be the real question. And I think, You know, like you said, I think that he has more to work with this year. So I think there's a chance that he does succeed this year, but there are still some concerns. And I think as long as he can perform well enough, then I think he's going to be the guy. And then they fall to Mac after that. And then Mac's obviously the future. I mean, because, you know, and and, and it's going to be exciting to see what he can do going forward with this team. But I think I think I see him running with Cam, at least for now. And then there's there's Stidham. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's obviously on IR back surgery. Yeah. I think they'll kind of view him as the backup of the future, considering if he's good in the, in the film room, good guy, which he seems to be. So um, Mac is certainly the future. I think there's no question about that. Yeah, I agree with that. And um, are you concerned at all about the Hunter Henry situation? I know that they were saying that it's not super serious, but that he might miss some time, but that they think he'll be ready by the time the actual season starts. I think he'll be ready. Like I said, it's a guy that, you know, um, I I think he'll be ready. I think it's a guy that, um, you know, has had a lot of success in this league, obviously been injury prone, but I think that comes with the position tight ends are asked to do a lot in the run game, the passing game, they're involved in every play. So that does come with the position. Uh, It's good news that it's just a shoulder thing. I I don't think that's anything major. Uh, And like I said, I'm sure if this was regular season, maybe he'd miss a game, maybe two. Uh, but whereas it's just preseason, he obviously has a lot of experience in the league. It's somebody from a guy that he'd probably benefit a little bit from it, considering he's in a new situation. But that's a guy that you don't have to worry about getting preseason snaps. You hope that he's ready week one and, and fully healthy, ready to go. Yeah, I mean, he's somebody, that, even when we signed him, that I was just concerned about injuries because he, it's tough for him to stay healthy. And so that does concern me a little bit. But I mean, you know, he went and got two tight ends in this free agent class. So I think that that's 
also a good thing. But I think if they're both healthy, that Hunter, I'm not sure what your thoughts are on this, but I think Hunter Henry ends up being kind of like the main tight end because John U. Smith, you can kind of use in other ways too. Yeah, I think Henry is certainly more reliable, I'd say, in the red zone just because he's a big body and he's, he's such a threat down there. But I think John, who's a guy that may have the better year simply because they can scheme some things up to get him touches and and be able to to make things work, uh, you know, on crossers, put him in the slot, line him up in the backfield. I just think he's a little bit more versatile. Um, but I guess it, it might be a thing in terms of like fantasy football. One guy might have a better week than the other. It's just a, you know, a Patriots type thing where they're game planning specifically for that team. One week, Henry might go off the other John who might, uh, which I think makes this team so much uh, more dangerous than they were last year, considering they have a lot of options to go to. Definitely. And, and that's, that's another example of, you know, when you alluded to depth earlier, I think he did a really good job of addressing depth this off season. And, and I think it's exciting and it's good to know that they have both of them because when healthy, they both can be really, really good and really contribute. And so when the news came out that that he was having some problems, but that it's not super serious, I was like, okay, that's good. But I'm still going to be a little concerned even throughout the season about injuries with him just because we know that he's injury prone. Yeah, I mean, he's a guy that's missed uh, at least five, 25 games in five years in the year, right? Yeah. He missed obviously a full season uh, for the ACL, so that factors in 16 of them. But that's a guy that misses – typically two to three games a year. Like I said, it does come with the position simply because that they're asked a lot. They're in on every play. Um, they're in the trenches. They're getting hit over the middle of the field. Um, but I think, you know, that's a guy that is, is, was much needed. They needed tight end help. Um, you're certainly going to pay a premium for a guy who I thought was the number one target on the market. Uh, him and Janu, they got both of them. I don't think you can complain much there. No, you can't. I mean, they couldn't have really done much better than that. Yeah, I mean, seriously, I mean, everybody wanted a number one wide receiver, right? And if you went number one wide receiver, number one tight end. Uh, but I think those two guys are going to demand, they're going to be on the field 80 to 85% of the game. Uh, they're going to demand a lot of targets considering James White's still involved. I think a guy like Aguilar and Bourne and Myers is is perfectly fine as long as you have those two tight ends healthy. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree with that. And I mean, and what do you think about you just the run game in general this year? Uh, I think it'll be a lot more dynamic if Cam is your quarterback, right? You obviously have that option with him. Uh, but I'm super excited to see Damian Harris and that kind of two second year leap. Uh, was one of PFF's highly ranked running backs, a uh, guy that's a tough runner, super elusive, can run between the tackles, uh, and obviously had a monster year last year. I think he was one of the only bright spots, according obviously Jacoby Myers too on offense. Uh, he looks bigger, faster a lot more comfortable. Obviously last year was technically a rookie for him. He redshirted his first year. So uh, I think that's a guy that can be a number one back in this team and on the, in this league and super, certainly make uh, this team a lot more, um, you know, dynamic. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm, I love Damian Harris. I mean, like you said, if there was anything we could take out of last season that was actually positive, he was definitely one of them. And oh, I think, sure. I think you're right with the type of quarterback cam is, and kind of his style, you can really have, you can really actually have a good running game and a good scheme going there. And I think that's something that's actually good about Cam is that you you can really rely on a run heavy offense if you wanted to, based on how Cam is and just his playing style. Yeah, I mean it, it, it's you know pros and cons, right? Cam obviously gives you a lot. Uh, you can probably do a little bit more offensively simply because he can hurt you with his legs. Uh, but yeah. I think the way they run this offense and the way it's been run for so long, Josh McDaniels is, um, I guess, sort of scheme and, and game plan. Mac Jones is the pro prototypical quarterback. Uh, but on the flip side, if he's not ready, I think you can kind of plug him in there and make things work simply because he's a little bit of a dual threat. And he's never really out of a play because he's so big and powerful and can, can extend plays outside the pocket. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, I think this team is definitely in in better shape than, you know, we expected them to be going into this season. I think at, based on the, how last season ended, I mean, we knew that he would probably make moves in the offseason, but we just weren't sure what this roster was even going to look like or be made of going into this season. And so I'm really happy with just the results and how this offseason went, went and his drafts, I think, 
went really well and really could not have gone much better. And I know people were, some people were frustrated that he didn't draft a receiver earlier, but you know, signing a couple of key receivers in the off season helps with that to the point where, you know, he needed to address other areas first when it came to the draft. Yeah. Like you said, when you have the two tight ends on the field, James White's still on the roster. You have Jacoby Myers, who was another bright spot offensively and somebody that I think uh, can kind of be that Edelman next out of the slot. Yeah. And then Kendrick Bourne and, and um, you know, and Elson Aguilar, you don't really need a true number one. Obviously everybody likes the, the sexy pick, the true number one, the, the highlight real player, like a Jalen Waddle or Devonte Smith. Uh, but that just wasn't going to happen. Right. I think yeah. where they're at receiver wise, they probably don't have the most depth, uh, but I think it's worth it's, you know, it's doable and they can get by with it as long as they have those two tight ends playing up to their par. Absolutely. Yeah. And this is something that you can say better than me because you've actually been at training camp. But from what I've heard, Nikhil Harry seems to be having his best camp so far that he's had since he's been here. And that's all pretty ironic considering he had requested a trade and said he wanted to go somewhere else. So do you, is that actually true? Is he actually having a really good camp this year? Yeah, this has been the best camp he's had since he's been a member of this team. Um, I think with Nikhil, he's obviously super talented and, and big and physical. So a lot of the success he's having, he should, he should be having, right? It's one-on-one, 50-50 balls, go up and make a play on the ball. Uh, he's still not creating much separation. Does look quicker, a little bit better out of his breaks, looks a little bit slimmer and more comfortable. Uh, but I think with Nikhil, it's always been, can you do it on game day? So that's what's so, mm-hmm. you know, I'm looking forward to tonight. Can he kind of have that carryover from camp to now where he's not going against, uh, you know, the DBs he sees every day? Uh, he's going to go against, you know, Kendall Fuller and, and, and a starting caliber defense tonight. Uh, and obviously throughout the preseason. So obviously super in- intrigued and, and happy that Nikhil is having this success. I don't know if he has a role on this team simply because um, it's just he, he can't do a lot of the things that they want him to. But if they were looking to trade him, it's certainly helping his value uh, kind of towards the end of the preseason. But whether he's here or not, him having a good camp is good for the Patriots. Yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, there's – when he first requested a trade, I was like, it's going to be hard for a team to agree to take him now just because he's struggled so much since he's been here. And he hasn't really shown a lot of promise since he's been here, really, which was disappointing because when they drafted him, there were a lot of expectations, I think, for him. And I know, I mean, I enjoyed watching him in college. So I thought that he was going to be really, really good for this team. And I was really pumped with that draft pick. But then he just wasn't really performing. And so I was like, you know, I don't know if they'll be able to find a team to trade for him now. But the fact that he's had a really good camp, I think that that kind of increases his value in terms of even if ultimately they still do decide to trade him, they can get more of a decent value in return, I think, now that he's been having a good camp. And I think that that's something that we could look out for because I'm still not ruling out the possibility that he might not be in a Patriots uniform. Yeah, like I said, I mean, him having a good camp is is good for him, good for the Patriots, whether they want to keep him or trade him. Um, I do think it, it was a kind of a tough situation for him. He missed the first eight games of the season, his rookie year. Tom Brady obviously had won, but you know how hard it is to kind of get on the same page with him and earn his trust. And then last year, didn't have an off season. That's really important for year two players, just as much as it is for rookies. He has Cam Newton as a quarterback who obviously isn't very efficient throwing the football. So it hasn't been the best situation for him to succeed. I don't think they've used him well. I think he is a talented player. Um, I just don't know what his fit is here, right? Because he's so big and physical. He's not really a threat down the field. He's a guy that can go up and win balls. Um, really, all I can think is in the red zone, if they want to go super heavy with the two tight ends and kind of line him out wide, sure. But is it, you know, useful and, and good roster management to kind of waste a spot on a guy that you may see play 20 snaps a game uh, when there's yeah. a lot of depth elsewhere? So it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting for sure to see what they do with him and kind of how this preseason shakes out for him. Yeah. If he has a really good preseason, then I do think that that would be intriguing then to see what they choose to do at that point. If he has like a really, really good preseason and everything from camp is transferring over into the games, the preseason games, then that's going to be interesting by the time week one comes around to even see what, what, how they choose to proceed from there. Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting, right? I don't, they at most get a fifth-round pick, maybe something on day three form, um, yeah. simply because they won't see a, a true on-field product. But 
I think if you don't have a role for him and he's not going to fit in this team, anything you can get for him is obviously beneficial. Tough investment, right? Spend a first round pick on him. Uh, you maybe get a fourth, probably a fifth or sixth back for him. It, it, it sucks in the long run, but uh, you live and learn. Obviously, guys kind of pan out. I think uh, I ultimately think a, a, a new scenery, a change of scenery for both sides would, would be beneficial for Nikhil and the Patriots. That's what I've said, too. I've, I've said to people, you know, maybe New England just isn't the place for him. Maybe he needs to be in another system because that will allow him to succeed more. Maybe it's it's just he needs just a change of environment. And I think it, it would be maybe best for both sides if that does happen. And then he could really grow somewhere else in a different system. For sure. I, I agree with that. A definite place for him. Yeah, I think a team would certainly take a chance on him. Former first round pick. He's been in New England, so he obviously carries that. Um yeah, if he wants a second contract in the league and an opportunity to to really show why he was a first rounder, it it's probably not going to be here, honestly. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, I definitely don't see him down the line being a kind of a future piece of this team unless, you know, unless something crazy happens or unless there's really a defined spot for him and he's really contributing, but I'm just I wouldn't be at all surprised if, you know, he's not here like pretty soon actually, I think. I think even even if this season he's still here, I just don't think he's going to be part of the future. I agree. I agree. But yeah, I know that you have to get going, but I really, really appreciate you joining the show today. And this was fun. I hope everybody enjoys watching the Patriots preseason game tonight. I know some people don't get that excited about preseason, but I do because I always miss football and just having some form of football on my TV makes me excited and makes me happy. So I hope everybody enjoys that. And is happy for football to be back. Go Patriots. Thanks again, everybody, for tuning into the show every week. I really appreciate it. So everyone have a great rest of your week and weekend.